Hello and Merry Christmas. It's officially the week before Christmas. Okay, guys, I've asked you this after Thanksgiving and you said no. Have you started your Christmas shopping? Sure, we've started. Yeah, everything gets started before Christmas Eve. <laughs> before Christmas Eve. <laughs> now, there's plenty of steps. I'm <laughs> sure we're not quite completely finished wrapping and a few other gifts that we need to get. And But there's plenty of time. We've got plenty of in-store pickups scheduled for the 24th. Really? So it'll be there, and then you just wrap it in the car on the way, and you're good to go. Wrap it on the way. <laughs> in the car. I'll be While driving. You're driving. My wife will have the wrapping paper. Hmm. Or the kids. The kids could do the wrapping. Or they could drive, and I can wrap. <laughs> They'd probably be better rappers. <laughs> you got a musical future here for these <laughs> kids, huh? <laughs> well, as you finalize all your Christmas prep work, we certainly encourage you to take time and remember to bask in the glory of who God is and all he has done for us by sending his son Jesus to be the sacrifice for our sins. Christmas is a time for us to celebrate not just Jesus' birth, but also new life in Christ that is available to all. Christmas Eve is also the first day of Hanukkah, the festival of lights. There are many Christians who will choose to also celebrate Hanukkah, the Hebrew word meaning dedication. It's always good to be reminded of the importance of dedicating our lives to our Savior, Jesus, and trusting God to lead us in all that we do. Let's lead right into today's show. It's filled with community related events. Restoring honor, that was the theme of a special event, the Lima Police Department. We will also take you to a recent community forum on opiate addictions and an in-studio interview today with local author Veronica Fox and her book, Thank You God for Not Answering My Prayer. But first, Christmas cards. Get out your Christmas cards. We've got some good ones so for you. So how many Christmas cards have you actually even gotten this year? You know, years ago I got tons of Christmas cards, but I think I've had three. I got one point. and a half. Yeah, I, I think overall the trend is, is people don't, just don't send them out as much. I, we don't mail things as much as we used to, so I think that's probably taken a, a hit out of the industry. And I, one I, and a half Christmas cards? Yeah, my parents, and then we oh got yeah, one from a Christmas card was sent to the two of us, <laughs> so we're... We're splitting it. We're Three splitting days a week it, yeah. in my house, four days a week in your oh, house. I thought maybe just cut it in half, and, or you can cut it uh, vertically. Instead of vertically, cut it horizontally, so we get the top half, so we get the bottom half. I just care too much about the Christmas card to separate it, because it needs to be united in one Christmas card. In one Christmas card. But I think re reality is a lot of people already know what's going on with everyone's lives yeah. because of social media. That's my true. parents write a letter every year, and they go month by month, here's what our family has done. They're not on Facebook. And so their friends don't know what's going on in their life, but you know, we often are already connected, so why connect again? Why connect again? <laughs> why? That's what people why think. Why reconnect and form relationships? Why? That's not what Andy, I think. Andy, we have to have a talk. Okay. <laughs> well, regardless <laughs> of whether you are getting many cards or not, we have a group of Christmas card sayings we don't think will ever <laughs> arrive in your <laughs> mailbox. These are courtesy Pastor Stephen Ambrose of Wapak Naz of the Wapak Church of the Nazarene, and here we go. Verses that would not be on a Christmas card. This is outstanding. Here's the first one. Maybe not outstanding, but it's funny. <laughs> Matthew 1.19. You see Joseph in the background, kind of in the shadows. And that verse says, he, had, or he has in his mind to divorce her quietly. Probably not mm. going to send that and say Merry Christmas. But it's part of the Christmas story. Joseph was wrestling with these thoughts when he found out his betrothed was pregnant certainly was. Um, yeah, you know, the reality is a Christmas story is not all fun and games and happiness. There's some difficult times in it. Well, it just, it goes to prove that, it goes to show that the, the Bible, you know, the Christmas story happened 2,000 some years ago, but it's still relevant today. I mean, obviously that, those are still questions that uh, many of us and many of you ha have struggled with, with, you know, a marriage that maybe isn't necessarily working or a relationship that isn't necessarily working. That just shows that Mary and Joseph were human beings like us. They struggled and had the same issues that we face, but found strength through, through God. And obviously now we have strength through their, their son, Jesus Christ. Yeah. Here's another one as we look at the Charlie Brown Christmas. Matthew 2, 3. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed <laughs> in all Jerusalem with him. Have a disturbing Christmas, Charlie Brown. <laughs> well, I understand Herod actually said, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> so that's accurate. <laughs> hey, maybe you do want to send Christmas cards like this. What? You want to get a laugh put it out of your mailbox? Right. <laughs> right. It's pretty good. How about Luke 2, 21? 
on either day when it was time to circumcise oh, on him. On the eighth day, sorry. On the, the eighth, eighth day, day, I'm sorry. On the eighth day. When it was time to circumcise him, he was named Jesus. Merry Christmas. Oh, my goodness. That's a nice greeting. Don't let your six-year-old girl open that one up. <laughs> well, that's a good point. <laughs> you have a question. <laughs> what? You know, let's just move on. Let's move on. How about this? Herod was furious, and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years and younger. Be joyful this Christmas. Well, Not if you're exactly. over two years, you're fine. That's so true. celebrate. Lots of fun. Oh, wow. <laughs> Christmas cards you won't get, but certainly part of the Christmas story. Yes. Conversation starters, though. Yeah. You know. Yeah, that's true. Well, mm -hmm. how about some scripture that you will likely find on a Christmas card? That's our scripture passage for this week. Mark, Luke 2, 10 through 15. Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be the sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. So it was when the angels had gone away from them into heaven that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. You know, we, we're quite familiar with the Christmas story, and if you're not familiar with the Christmas story, certainly TV44 is a great place to spend some time in um, the next couple of weeks as we'll have lots of great Christmas movies. But uh, we certainly hope that you take time this Christmas season, open up the scripture, read uh, the second chapter of Luke with your family, and, and really discuss and understand what was going on that, that wonderful morning some 2,000 years ago. The greatest story uh, ever. God leaving heaven, becoming a baby, and doing it for you and for me so he could restore that relationship. We talked about relationships earlier. This is a relationship that you want in your life day after day. God cares for you and he showed it so much that he came to earth and cried and had, I don't know what a dirty diaper looked like back then, but <laughs> whatever they were changing diapers, Jesus lived through all that and he did it just for you. You know, shepherds are a central part of the story. And in, in that time, in that era, shepherds, they were among the lowest of society. I mean, just, it, we, we've talked about this before, how, you know, the, the Bible really reaches to every single layer of society. It is relatable now, just as it was 2,000 years ago, as it was 5,000 years ago, and will continue to be relatable. And as those shepherds were guided by the star, one man and his wife are now being guided by prayer and their faith in God. They step out to do all they can to let local law enforcement know that they are appreciated, valued, and, ca and called by God. Jennifer has more information on a recent Restoring Honor event held at the Lima Police Department. At first, the plan was to take a cruise. It sounded like the perfect 40th birthday celebration for Maranatha Ihe Caronye and his wife. But that was before God got involved in the conversation. You see, that conversation actually started 10 years ago with a promise, a promise God had not forgotten. Instead of celebrating Maranatha's birthday on himself, God was saying to celebrate by giving honor to others, a specific group of others. God ministered to me one time and told me, he said, did you remember several years ago you made a covenant with me? He said, I will love you to take all the little money you guys have saved for cruise, I need you to trade it and then use it to go and then bless the life of the Polish men. And that's how Restoring Honor began. First a husband and wife, and then a growing group of individuals wanting to join together to impact the lives of area law enforcement. I mean, Romans 13 does say we're sub supposed to submit to those in authority over us, and you know, they, those who bear arms bear them uh, for our protection. So we're, we're grateful for what they're doing, and we want to let them know that. This was the second Restoring Honor outreach event at the Lima Police Department. During this Christmas appreciation party held December 7th, LPD officers and employees were treated to a made-from-scratch dinner as well as a keepsake zip-up with the words, O oh Lord, protect our protectors. Maranatha addressed the group with positive encouragement and faith-based comments. Just two hours out of one afternoon, but a message designed to boost these officers day in and day out. We're only people. 
we can't do it alone. If we don't have support from the community, uh, and, and whether that support is in the form of prayer and showing appreciation, uh, or, or in the form of stepping up to be a witness uh, in, in when criminal activity occurs. Um, if we don't have that kind of support from the community, we just can't really be effective at what we do. So it means a lot. Another Restoring Honor event is scheduled for the Putnam County Sheriff's Office. Well, it's nice. Now time to talk about books. And if you're still thinking of a unique Christmas gift in this final week before Christmas, we have an idea for you uh, that will inspire not just you, but the person that you give this gift to. You might want to buy two, one for yourself and one for the other. Author Veronica Fox is joining us now. She is the author of Thank You, God, for Not Answering My Prayer. Um, a, uh, a life story in a sense, but an inspiring story that can really impact, I think, anybody in their area of life. Veronica, tell me a little bit about what inspired you to write this book. Well, it's a story that's very unique, and I've had a lot of people in my life say, you should write that down. That would, that would be a nice, um, feel-good, happy story, but also a very real story about pain and hurt and anger and um, betrayal just a lot of things that happen in so many of our lives. And um, so I had the opportunity just to write it all down. And so what, what is this story about? Give us a little synopsis. Um, it's about my son and I, um, he's special needs. Um, he came into my life very differently. I was his babysitter and um, his birth mom just kind of abandoned him. And um, at the, I was single and I was just starting my real estate career and I wasn't prepared. I didn't want this. Um, I didn't want this. Mm. It wasn't what I had planned for my life. I knew I could be very successful. Didn't have anything holding me back, and so I just was not prepared for this. And then, in addition to um, having this happen, I found out he had a lot of issues that I wasn't aware of, and so that put another glitch in mm -hmm. my life that I had planned, and um, caused me to be very angry at times. Caused me to question God. I was trying to be someone. I had felt like nothing most of my life, and I wanted to rise above that and be better. And this was getting in my way. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't what I wanted to happen. And so it caused me to be very angry for a while. And um, he was a very difficult child, being withdrawing from drugs and a lot of issues. Um, and um, it was about, it was almost four years between the time when he um, came to live with me from the time I adopted him. And I just, I learned about love, unconditional love. And I fell in love with him and I felt um, that we were supposed to be together. And it was difficult, it was very, very hard. So the title is, Thank You God for Not Answering My Prayer and listening to that little snippet of your story. I imagine at the beginning you were praying, God, take this away. God, Absolutely. this is not what I want, yet, he didn't answer that prayer because he saw a much bigger picture, which you now can look back and see as well. Absolutely, and I'm grateful every day, I thank God, because I wouldn't be who I am. I wouldn't be the person that um, I'm, I'm now finding myself um, in a much better point in my life than I ever could have imagined without him. Um, I'm stronger, I'm confident, I know that I can do anything. I overcame this, I can do anything. And um, that's why I wanted to write this book, because I wanted to encourage other people. There are so many people that are destitute and distraught and in pain, and they hurt, and they feel there's no hope. They feel there's no way out. And I want them to know, um, as I was always told, a poor white trash girl, um, you don't have to stay there. Mm. You don't have to have that mentality. You don't have to be that person. You can rise above that, but it's going to be hard. It's going to be really hard. But with God, absolutely, with God, it's possible. Absolutely, uh, you wrote you wrote a lot of inspiring things in this book. But there's a couple paragraphs that really really hit me because not only was the, this impact you, I think this could impact anybody in situations in our lives. This was the point where I think your son was may have been going through the drug withdrawals. He was just crying. He was screaming. Yes. He just wouldn't stop. Mm -hmm. And uh, you said. You, you, you finally, you, you, you were giving it all to God. You were saying, you know what, you've given me this situation. I'd love this boy. I don't know what to do with this. And then you heard God and you wrote, 
It was not out loud, but quiet in my spirit. It seemed as though he was tired of my whining, God being the one tired of my whining. He let me know it was time to accept this, to pull myself together and deal with it. He had given me all I needed to handle this situation and I could make things better. It was time to end the pity party and do this. I needed to pick myself up by the bootstraps and get to it. I knew he was right, even though I didn't want to admit it at that moment. And that seemed to be like a turning point. It was. Once you truly gave that to God and realized this boy is in my life for a reason, mm -hmm. things started to change. They did. Inside of me. And when, when you change inside, then your whole world is different. Then you start seeing things differently. And I had tried avenues. I had tried to get people to adopt him. I had tried to have families um, take him for a little while and see if he would fit in their lives. And none of it worked, nothing. And um, I couldn't just take him to children's services and drop him off, which was a recommendation. I couldn't, yeah. I just couldn't. And then um, it, it was interesting at that point that you just read, um, God knew when I gave it over to him, it, it was like my son, the withdrawal was over hmm. and he became this beautiful little boy. It, it was amazing. It, it was like right there. Um, it was different. It all changed. And that's when I started falling in love. Mm -hmm. He just, he's beautiful. He's a beautiful child. And um, it was just then I knew I got to have this boy. He's, he's, he's going to make me better. Somehow we're going to do this. We're going to do this. <laughs> Don't know how, but we're going to do this. So he's 23 years old now. He is. And you look back, it hasn't been an easy road. No. There's been more hiccups along the way, but could you look back? Could you see your life without him? I couldn't. I just couldn't. Um, it's been a long, long road, but I, I don't know where I'd be. I don't. I wouldn't have this book, obviously, and I wouldn't have this opportunity to share with people that you're going to hurt, and you may hurt because somebody else messed up, and it's it, it's going to be really bad, and you're going to hate it, and you're going to fight it, but um, if you trust God, you'll get through it. Mm -hmm. It's it. It may not be easy, but um, it's like the Bible says, it's a race, and you're gonna, you're gonna, you know, sweat and cry yeah. and, and yeah. Um, be exhausted mentally and emotionally and physically, but um, it, it, the end will be worth it. And like you said, our story's not over. I don't know what all's ahead for us, but I know it's gonna be okay. Mm. Um, I wouldn't change anything. I learned a lot. I would have done things differently had I known, but it was still meant to be and I'm okay with that. It's all, it's all good. God was with you along the entire way. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, maybe you have a situation in your life where you're thinking, this is not what I asked for, this is not what I want, this was just handed to me, this was not part of my plan, but was it part of God's plan? Did God have a way to uh, put things into your life knowing it would mold you, it would bend you, it would put you at his feet saying, God, I can't do this without you. As Veronica can testify when you do that, God can show you things that you never, ever could have expected in your own life. I encourage you to get your own copy of this book. Thank you, God, for not answering my prayer. You can find it at her website, veronicabfox.com. It's also available at amazon.com and all of the Lima Read More Hallmark stores. Thank you so much, Veronica, for thank joining you. us on Faith and Friends. Thank you. And thank you for sharing your story and being faithful to God and saying yes to God. Thank you. Well, Veronica's book is designed to give hope to those who read it. Giving hope is also a theme of the first opiate forum that was recently held here in Lima. The event was held December 9th and truly opened one's eyes to the rising problems of such addictions, while at the same time offering tools for faith-based organizations to step in and be proactive in a way to curb statistics. Truthfully, I've never ever met a heroin addict that wants to be on heroin. Staff Lieutenant Matt Treglia of the Allen County Sheriff's Office speaks during a question and answer forum at the recent Giving Hope Faith-Based Opiate Forum at the Shawnee Alliance Church. The first local event of its kind brought together medical, law enforcement, psychologists and counselors, pastors and faith-based professionals who have been living firsthand the effects of opiate addictions in and around Allen County. There's lots of challenges. We see at least one overdose per day. Um, sometimes multiple overdoses per day. The problems with heroin and other opiates are no secret to most people in this region. Family members, friends, the neighbor's grandson, 
just a few examples of the too many individuals being affected by these addictions. Um, Allen County Coroner Gary Beasley says in 2015, there were 18 recorded deaths by overdose in Allen County, with one month left in 2016, already 36 overdose deaths had been recorded. So what is the solution? Is there a solution? How can churches and faith-based groups help? An event like this one was intended to be the start. While the lighting at the event may have been dim, the message was anything but. The real challenge for health care, for our physicians, for, for nursing, for social work, for all of us, is taking that time. Now yesterday, I took the time. It mattered. It made that connection. He felt the compassion. And I have a follow-up to do with him today. The time is the problem for us the sometimes not being jaded. So in answer to your question, if we can afford the time and have our faith partners help us, um, sometimes when we don't have the time, if we have a faith partner that has the time, that can make the difference for our patients. The Office of Ohio Attorney General Mike DeWine agrees that churches and faith-based organizations can be a key in this process. Woodhaven Outreach Coordinator Greg Delaney is involved with an Attorney General initiative to create that link. Over the course of this year, we've introduced something called a Champions Group. Why that? It's a small group is familiar to the church. And so what we've done is build a small curriculum for uh, the church to understand a little bit about what an opiate addict might be dealing with, people that are in addiction that are dealing with, but really just encouraging the, encouraging the church to open their doors, pull down stigma, begin to love people, but bring them into a place of community. One of the interesting things that we've learned about opiate addiction is it is an isolating disease that demands isolation. So what we've said to the church, church, you're already ready built for community. You just don't understand this community. So help us educate you about this community and then just be available and open your doors. Is there a quick solution? No. Is there a sure-proof solution? Maybe. But with God, all things are possible. The afternoon portion of this one-day event included a time of prayer. Delaney told the attendees that keeping God a central part of these discussions and potential solutions is truly the key. Uh, churches are also wonderful fits to help with sober living facilities, to help support sober living facilities within their community. So what we've done is we look for some low-hanging fruit for a church to immediately get engaged with their people that might be already part of their mercy outreach, their other outreach, and say, these are quick ways to plug in if you'll view this community of people who are dealing with addiction as a mission field. And when we can kind of switch that and switch that as, as kind of, this is the demographic, guys, this is, this is very similar to what you already dealt with, it really helps folks to say, okay, I understand mission, now show me how to, to address that mission field. If you have a loved one dealing with an opiate addiction, know that there are organizations wanting to help. The panel members stressed the importance of patience and understanding. Getting into the programs doesn't happen instantly, and the recovery process can take a lengthy amount of time. Here are names of organizations who attended the exhibitors portion of the Giving Hope Forum. Contact them individually to find out how they might be able to help you or how you can get involved. The Nice Swanger Performing Arts Center is celebrating a landmark birthday this year. It was 10 years ago the state-of-the-art establishment opened its doors to the community, each year offering a full slate of top-notch concerts, musicals, speakers, and so much more. Recently, one who was part of the first season returned for this anniversary year. Sandy Patty performed her Christmas Blessings concert to a nearly sold-out crowd. On a cold, blustery night in the middle of winter, who wouldn't want to be warmed up with a musical melody like this? The Van Wert High School Choir isn't the only group of people who have benefited greatly for the past 10 years. The entire community of Van Wert and all the surrounding counties have been enriched since the Nicewanger Performing Arts Center opened its doors March 15, 2007. Now, as the center celebrates its 10th season, it's continuing to bring top-notch musical, theatrical, and inspirational acts and speakers, as well as bring back some of those who helped launch the positive reputation of a big city music house with a small town flair. Sandy Patty brought her Christmas Blessings tour to Van Wert December 4th, one of several Christian musical acts included in this year's lineup. A packed theater got to enjoy not only this highly acclaimed soprano, but also three of her children.
For Sandy Patty, it was her second trip to this beautiful performance hall. Later this season, David Phelps will make a return trip to the Nicewanger, this time for a Good Friday concert. Why do these singers keep coming back? Probably the same reason the attendees do as well. Quality values, quality performances, and in the end, a great opportunity to showcase even top-notch local talent. You can check out npacvw.org to see the season offerings yet to come, which includes David Phelps on Good Friday. Congratulations to Nice Swanger Performing Arts Center on its 10-year anniversary, while TV44 will celebrate the 35th anniversary June of 2017. And we are thankful to God for his provision, which we know is made possible through many of you. Our fall campaign currently standing what are we, over $60,000? Actually, we're just about $70,000 wow. is where we are right That's now. fantastic. And we're moving towards that $175,000 mark for next year's budget. Let's take a moment to thank some who have partnered with us this month for the coming years. I want to thank the, the Climbers from Columbus Grove, the Thomases from Finley, as well as uh, Shirley for her gift as well. Certainly very thankful for each and every one of these. Certainly thankful to Lester in Lima, thankful to Barbara in Ottawa, to the Neals, the Kesters, also Missy Gandy, thank you so much. Uh, we're just very appreciative. The, re the dollar amount is really not what matters because God can use the giving of your heart in incredible ways and use that to, to make it bigger than, you, than it even it is in your budget. God can do amazing things. Well, don't forget, there is still time this week or next week to make a donation to TV44 that will count in your 2016 tax deductions. It's easy and safe to donate to TV44. You can donate anytime online at WTLW.com. You can also mail your donation to 1844 Beatty Road, Lima, Ohio, 45807. 2016 tax deductible, deductible donations do need to be postmarked by December 31st. Maybe you prefer to hand deliver your donation. Here are the days available yet this year, the week before Christmas, Monday through Thursday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. On Friday, the front office is closed, but you can call ahead and see if someone will be available to let you inside. The week after Christmas, our offices will be open Tuesday through Friday, 10 to 4. Again, that is the week after Christmas. Thank you so much for partnering with us here at TV44, 35 years and going. Well, finally, you can call in your donation as well, 419-339-4444. To reach our answering service, please leave a message with your phone number and we will return your call as soon as we can. We want to get back to you and we just are so thankful for you. Before we go, the Defiance Post of the Ohio State Highway Patrol has some tips and warnings about driving in the winter weather, as it is certainly here. <laughs> they asked us to share with you. This is the time of the year to allow extra time to get to your destination and be sure to maintain a safe distance between your vehicle and the traffic ahead. Keep in mind that bridges and overpasses freeze up before roadways. In case of a breakdown, turn on your hazard warning lights and call pound 677 for assistance. Also, stay in the vehicle. Troopers suggest that if you get stuck in the snow, make sure that your tailpipe is free of all snow and debris to decrease your chance of carbon monoxide poisoning. Here's a list of items to carry in your car in case of a breakdown. A cell phone with the car charger, road flares or reflectors, a help or call police sign, a first aid kit, flashlight, blanket or sleeping bag, a small shovel, bottled water and energy foods, candles and matches, and a tow strap with a chain. For up-to-the-minute road conditions, you can always log on to the Ohio Department of Transportation's website or download the OHGO app for your smartphone to keep up to date with traffic issues. Some good advice there. Let's add one more item to that list. Pack a Bible in your car. <laughs> Times yeah. of trouble, the Word of God can be soothing to the soul. God is always available to hear your prayers. And on this week before Christmas, we leave you now with one more look at uh, the famous part of the Christmas story when the angels appear to the shepherds. Luke 2, 10 through 15, Then the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which will be to all people. For there is born to you this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. 
So it was, when the angels had gone away from them into heaven, that the shepherds said to one another, Let us now go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has come to pass, which the Lord has made known to us. What a great thing that was which the Lord made known to the shepherds and has also made known to us. Jesus Christ, God's Son, born on earth as a baby, who would live 33 life-changing years on this earth, the impact still changing lives all around us today. From all of us here at TV44, we say happy birthday, Jesus, and Merry Christmas to you. We pray your family enjoys a blessed Christmas Day this coming Sunday.